Think about me. Now think about yourself. Now think about me. Now think about yourself. Now think about me. Now think about yourself. Who knows more about YouTube? So what's with all the negativity when I say I've figured out a better way of doing things? So yesterday morning, I announced that I would be deleting my channel. As far as I was concerned, this wasn't bad news. It was good news. I posted a long video because I wanted to carefully explain why it's good news, not bad news. I'm restructuring what I do in order to increase my output and my reach while simultaneously making myself uncancelable. That sounds good to me. The way things are now, I can be working at 100%. And I'll only be accomplishing 40% because the way I'm doing things is defective given how the platforms have changed over the past several years. So in order to counteract the way they're doing things, I'm revolutionizing the way I'm doing things so that I can maximize my effectiveness. That sounds good to me. But what do I see when I go to the comments section? Tons of complaining. No, David. Baking bricks in Egypt is great. Don't go into the desert. The desert is scary. Not to a scorpion. Let me see if I can break this down differently, and then I'll show you how to think five years ahead of everyone else. Here's how I am. If you have some sort of legitimate authority over me, let's say I'm in the military and you're the general, I will obey your orders to the death. You can tell me to charge into a bloodbath. I'll do it. If there's a bloodbath over on Bloodbath Hill, I'm your guy. But if you don't have any legitimate authority over me, I'm probably not going to react well if you try to boss me around. Now, if you're evil and corrupt and you don't have any legitimate authority over me, I'm going to make sure you don't control me. If you somehow gain some illegitimate authority over me, I'm going to figure out a way to break that authority. Now, I look around at the world, and what do I see? I see some horrible people who have no business controlling anyone else coming up with ways to control everyone. And it's pretty disturbing. For example, you've got a Twitter mob controlling corporations by screaming and whining, and those corporations control a lot of what happens in the world. Technology, entertainment, commerce are all in the hands of a small group of companies, and those companies all mindlessly obey the latest demands of the loudest mob on Twitter. Should we, A, keep giving this egomaniacal monstrosity greater and greater control over us, or B, take steps to minimize its control over us? I say B, obviously B. But a bunch of you are yelling at me, no, David, go with A. Whatever you do, don't minimize their control over you. I don't know about you, but as soon as I find out that a bunch of control freak corporations are trying to turn me into a puppet, I immediately, automatically start checking for strings. If you find one, cut it. Let me give you an example, which will effortlessly transition to a product placement, which will ultimately pay for my editor, which will allow me to put out more content, all while making the point I want to make. True story. A while back, I went to visit my grandmother. She's pretty old and has heart problems, so I wanted to bring my youngest son to see her. She kind of lives in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, I was sitting on the couch and her husband was looking for a T-Mobile bill because the payment was due and he didn't want to get a late fee. So he was scrambling around looking for the bill. And then I saw under a stack of magazines on the coffee table, the corner of the T-Mobile bill. So I said, you're looking for the T-Mobile bill? I think it's under these magazines. So he got the bill. End of story, right? Wrong. About 10 minutes later, I go upstairs and grab my laptop. I open my laptop, and the first three sites I go to, I get ads for, you guessed it, T-Mobile. Now, my laptop was on a completely different floor when I mentioned T-Mobile. How did something hear me and know that it was me? Well, I had my cell phone with me. Now, this was really, really creepy. I said, 
Oh my goodness, you mean to tell me something is listening to me through my phone and then trying to get me to do something on my laptop? I'm not a very tech-savvy guy, but I wanted to do something about that. And the simplest, most cost-effective step you can take is to get a subscription to Atlas VPN. It sends all of your internet traffic through an encryption tunnel. It hides your IP address. The internet doesn't know who you are or where you are. Atlas VPN also blocks malicious links and trackers. It monitors data breaches and warns you if your personal information or passwords have been compromised how is this not a good idea? So, when I had to decide which sponsor to go with first, who did I pick? Atlas VPN. Every person who subscribes is throwing an extra monkey wrench into a global machine of manipulation and control. I like throwing monkey wrenches into manipulation machines. So, I throw some ads for Atlas VPN into my videos. It's $1.99 per month that covers all of your devices cheapest monkey wrench ever. So click the link in the description box, download the app, get a subscription, and turn it on. Now, do you see how I advertised for a product while making my point? Can Ben Shapiro do that? Absolutely not. I just pulled that off, and I didn't need to manipulate you or mine your data to do it. What makes you think I haven't figured out how to beat YouTube? So, a bunch of you are complaining because David Wood, the tactical genius, decided to delete the Act 17 Apologetics YouTube channel. But why, David? Why delete your channel? Easy. Because having all of my stuff together on one big channel gives YouTube too much power to destroy it all in an instant. I've been at two strikes multiple times in the past year. In March, I was this close to having my entire channel terminated. If a different reviewer had reviewed my case, my channel would already be gone. Now, if my channel had been terminated for the kinds of strikes I was getting, YouTube would have notified me that I can't ever be on YouTube again. So not only does terminating my channel bring down all my content, it also prevents me from ever being on YouTube again. How do you keep YouTube from nuking all of your content at once? You compartmentalize your content. You divide it up. You have it on different channels run by different people. If a video on one channel gets banned, it doesn't affect the other channels. Notice, if YouTube terminates my current channel, which they keep almost doing, I'm permanently done on YouTube. If I terminate my channel, I'm still free to post on YouTube. Get it? The other main objection in the comments was, well, why don't you just leave your channel up while you go build other channels and platforms? Let's recap. It's a matter of time before they delete my channel. It's almost happened multiple times. They've been getting more and more aggressive. They keep coming up with new rules, and then they ban your old videos based on the new rules. The reason my channel is still up right now is because we keep arguing with YouTube to keep it up but that isn't going to work forever. And remember, what happens if they delete my channel? I'm gone from YouTube forever. Is that eventually going to happen unless I figure a way around it? Definitely. So when you tell me to keep my channel, what you're really telling me is, David, leave your channel up and go do your other things and you'll soon be banned forever because they give you bogus strikes every month. And if you're not constantly fighting to keep your channel up, it'll be terminated within a few months. Some of you also said, why not work on a new YouTube channel while leaving the old one up as a resource? And you just don't understand the rules. If you get suspended on one of your channels, you're not allowed to post on any of your channels while the suspension is in effect. Steven Crowder had to learn that one the hard way. He got banned for a week on his main channel, and he posted an announcement on his other channel, and YouTube gave him another strike on his other channel for posting while suspended. So what good does it do to be working on a new channel when I'd still be under the suspensions of the old channel, and I would eventually get completely banned from the platform because of the old channel? Now, consider the alternative that I've proposed and that a bunch of you are complaining about. 
I delete my YouTube channel next month. I post all of my content on our own platform, one that will never ban me. Let's say I take some of my content from that platform and I upload it to YouTube. Some fan uploads some of my other content to a channel that he runs. Another fan uploads some of my other content to a channel that she runs. The content is spread out over multiple channels. What happens when a video on one channel gets a strike? The other channels aren't affected. They can keep uploading. If YouTube were to say, David, one of your videos got banned on another channel, so you can't post any new videos. Sorry, shaggy defense, it wasn't me. I posted those videos on my own platform. Someone else copied those videos and put them on YouTube, not me. Can't punish me for what someone else did. Unbannable. Now, some of you will say, but if the content is on different channels, how will we know where to find the videos we're looking for? Um, because I'll just tell you. Plus, there will be a mailing list and a website and an app. That's why in my video I had that entire discussion about how the community can communicate. Are you seeing how all of this ties together to make it much harder to ban a content creator or even slow him down? We've got to think ahead. You got to think multiple moves ahead of the people who are trying to control you. People always seem to be focused on what they want right now. One of the biggest problems in the world is that people can't seem to anticipate what's going to happen just a few months down the road. I'm generally thinking 10 to 50 years down the road, minimum of five years. I'm not doing anything without thinking five years ahead. So when you see me doing something, it's because I thought to myself, what do I want to be the case five years from now? Because I need to be working on that now. What should I be doing now to bring about what I want to be the case five years from now? If you think to yourself, I like David's videos, I want them to stay. But instead of thinking about right now, you instead think about a year or three years or five years from now, what happens? If I keep running my channel the way I've been running it, what happens a few months from now, a year from now, a few years from now? Channel terminated, banned from YouTube permanently. If I leave my channel up while I work on other things, what happens a few months from now, a year from now, a few years from now? Channel terminated, banned from YouTube permanently. What happens if I delete my channel and restructure everything I do? I'm unbannable until they come out with new rules to ban me. So what I see you saying in the comments section is, David, I love your YouTube videos so much that I want you to do something which will inevitably get you completely banned from the platform in the very near future instead of making sure your content is safe. Get it now? Special thanks to everyone who contributed to the fundraiser to make all of this possible. Before you go, be sure to check out my video, Cyrus Reacts to Social Media Censorship. It'll clear things up even more.